If there's one group of animals alive today that seem as if they were ripped directly from the past, it'd have to be the crocodilians. Looking at them, they'd seem more at home during the age of the dinosaurs, compared to our current world full of fluffy mammals. And it makes sense, since these animals represent an incredibly ancient lineage of creatures. This video will go over the history and evolution of these reptiles. Crocodiles belong to a larger group of reptiles known as the archosaurs. First evolving around 248 million years ago during the early Triassic, this clade comprises a variety of different animals, with the two most notable examples being the dinosaurs and their descendants, the birds. But these two groups are only part of one branch of Archosauria, that being Avimetatarsalia. The other branch, Pseudosuchia, will be more relevant to us today. Pseudosuchia was home to an incredible array of different reptiles that were widespread throughout the Triassic period. Some of these lines include Ryasuchidae, containing predatory reptiles that resembled crocodiles with the capability of walking on two legs such as Postosuchus, as well as members of Edosauridae, like Desmatosuchus, which were large spiky herbivores. Pseudosuchians and archosaurs as a whole are fascinating animals that really deserve their own video, but for the time being we'll focus on the Pseudosuchian clade Crocodilomorpha. This group emerged at the end of the Triassic, 235 million years ago with some of its most basal members being part of Venusuchia. While the animals here are all indeed some of the earliest crocodilomorphs, the group itself is generally seen as an informal one. There has been a lot of debate as to the relationships among the animals within the group and if they could instead be composed of different sister lineages. That being said, the reptiles here nonetheless share several key physical traits characteristic of early crocodilomorphs. Sphenosuchians were generally small, slender animals with long legs, snouts, and tails. This can be seen in genera such as Hesperosuchus. This late Triassic reptile made use of these attributes to help with quick movement along land. Although the animal is found near bodies of water such as rivers and streams, it set itself apart from modern crocodilians by being fully terrestrial. One interesting aspect of Sphenosuchians like Hesperosuchus were that their hind limbs were longer and slightly more robust compared to their forelimbs. This has led some researchers to believe that many early crocodilomorphs were capable of bipedalism, similar to Pseudosuchians like Postosuchus. In addition, they theorized that the slender forelimbs of the Sphenosuchians could be used to grasp prey. Crocodilomorphs were unique among the Pseudosuchians in being the only lion in this group to survive past the end Triassic extinction. The Sphenosuchians like Sphenosuchus and the Targosaurus being found in the early Jurassic period. Following the Sphenosuchians was the genus Chiantosuchus. Through phylogenetic analysis, it was shown that this animal could not be classified as a member of Sphenosuchia, but at the same time it was still distinct from later crocodilomorphs, and thus fell between the two groups. However, the flattened shape of its skull showed similarities to future crocodile relatives. All other crocodilomorphs fall under the clade crocodiliforms, and it's here that we see reptiles that even more strongly resemble the crocodiles and alligators that we're familiar with today. The most basal crocodiliforms can be found under the grouping Protosuchia. As similar to Sphenosuchia, this isn't a proper taxonomic grouping, but more so a collection of animals with similar physical characteristics. These terrestrial reptiles possess smaller bodies compared to modern crocodilians, rarely exceeding a meter in length, but they also had some features common in their modern relatives, such as osteoderms, which are basically just bony deposits in the skin. They were known to have had two rows of plates that ran from their head to their tail. Some Protosuchians include Hemiprotosuchus from the late Triassic as well as Protosuchus from the early Jurassic. There are some other crocodiliforms that sometimes get grouped under Protosuchus as well, such as the members of Gobiosuchidae, which also share some of the crocodilian traits such as osteoderms. There are tons of these genera found throughout the world, and genera such as Gobiosuchus even managed to survive all the way to the late Cretaceous, meaning that these basal crocodiliforms would have managed to hang on to the fossil record all the way until the end of the Mesozoic. From here on out, crocodilian evolution can get very complex, with the brand new changes to their lifestyle that resulted in a change to their physiology. Many of these reptiles lived a more aquatic lifestyle, and a new change aided to this, that being the development of a secondary palate. Previously, crocodile ancestors had to hold their breath when swallowing food or being underwater, but the second palate allowed these reptiles to be able to breathe through their nostrils. You could probably figure out then why today's alligators and crocodile nostrils are located where they are. Regardless, if you thought there were a lot of unclear relationships before, well then, th there, are, there are a lot of them here too, I guess. I'll do my best to try and work through the record here, starting with the Notosuchians. Being found mostly in the southern continent of Gondwana, Notosuchians have some of the most unique forms of all crocodile relatives yet. Some of these include a Natosuchus, whose snout strongly resembles a duck's bill, but unlike ducks, this animal had a diet composed primarily of aquatic animals. Another notable Notosuchian is our Arariposuchus, 
Like modern crocodilians, this animal had the capabilities of going inside water aided by a strong tail, but what's more fascinating about it are its relatively long legs, with which it was known to have galloped across plains while hunting prey. One final note of Suki and I'd like to mention here might be my favorite, and that's Simosuchus. This is perhaps the most uncrocodile-like crocodile relative we've covered so far. While it has a coat of osteoderms alongside its body, it's also got a much less elongated, rounder snout alongside a shorter, stouter body. Overall, this led to the crocodiliform having a very cute appearance, and in reality, it was probably a lot gentler compared to his relatives, likely having a herbivorous diet. Notosuke is an extremely interesting group of animals that also deserves its own video at some point, but for the sake of this video, we can move on further to another branch of the crocodiliforms, the Neosukians. The key trait that distinguishes Neosukians from these other animals is the presence of a tooth notch between the premaxilla and maxilla parts of the skull. One of the earliest Neosukians, and one clade I'm excited to go over, just because of how cool the animals inside of it are, are the Thalatosukians. This group, evolving in the early Jurassic, contains the marine crocodiles. The first known Thalatosukian in the fossil record is Turner Sukius from the early Jurassic of the United Kingdom. Sometime during this period, Thalatosukia saw a divergence into two different groups of animals, the Teleosauroids, the Mentriorhynchoids. The first group, Teleosauroidea, was known to have looked very similar to modern-day gharials and saw a predominantly aquatic lifestyle. Rather than living life out in the open ocean, teleosauroids often chose to swim near coastal waters, or in some cases adopted semi-terrestrial lifestyles to hunt down prey. This is especially notable in the subfamily Teleosaurinae, with members such as Teleosaurus. Due to these habits, they had more extensive body armor compared to other subfamilies like Elodontinae, which had less armor. Genera like Bathysuchus from Elodontinae lived in deeper oceans and thus didn't require as much armor for streamlined swimming. Metriorhynchoidea was home to an abundance of fully marine crocodiliforms. These reptiles made numerous adaptations for life in the oceans. These include the outright elimination of osteoderm armor, a smooth, streamlined body, flippers on their limbs with reduced musculature, and flukes on their tails. In addition, some species even had salt glands, a feature present in modern-day animals such as turtles and marine iguanas, which helped them drink seawater. Genera like Metriorhynchus would have been right at home alongside other marine reptiles like plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs in the Jurassic Oceans as they hunted fish and other small marine creatures. Historically, Metriorhynchoidea was believed to have been present only in the Jurassic. The recent discovery of fossils such as Mashimasaurus rex from Tunisia indicates that these animals survived into the early Cretaceous before going extinct. Tethysuchia finds itself sister to Thalatosuchia and contains two notable families, Folidosauridae as well as Dirosauridae. Folidosauridae evolved during the late Triassic and existed in the fossil record up until the end of the Cretaceous. This family had more traditional looking crocodiliforms, albeit some of them, such as the early Cretaceous Sarcosuchus, reached gigantic sizes, measuring 31 feet and weighing up to 4.3 metric tons. At this size, this animal is capable of preying on dinosaurs. Some members of the related Dirosauridae were similarly sized to Sarcosuchus, such as Phosphatosaurus, measuring up to about 30 feet long. But many genera here set themselves apart by being marine crocodiliforms similar to those in Thalatosuchia. Similar to the Teleosauroids, these reptiles tended to live around coastal waters and also had the capability of walking on land. If you look at the time period of the Dirosaurid we just listed, you might notice one thing, and that is that this genera, among others in its family, were lucky enough to have survived the end Cretaceous extinction. Only one other group of crocodiliforms would be able to share that same fate. For that, we'll have to head on over to the other side of the crocodiliform tree, where we can find other families such as Atopasauridae, a late Jurassic group that contained some small-sized genera that survived in nearshore environments, as well as the semi-aquatic Goniopholids, evolving around the Middle Jurassic. But the most relevant group to us here are the members of Yusukia. First appearing in the early Cretaceous period, Yusukians made great evolutionary strides in terms of anatomy that led to many of the changes we see in crocodiles and their relatives today. These include their nares being surrounded by pterygoid bones, enhancing their breathing capabilities while underwater, as well as a ball and socket-like joint between the bones of their vertebrae, which would allow for more flexibility and strength, especially while swimming. Also, all members of Yusukia had four rows of dorsal plates, compared to the two we see in earlier relatives. The family Hyliochampsidae, evolving 130 million years ago, contained the most basal Yusukians within the known fossil record, with Hyliochampsa being found in the island of White in the English Channel. There isn't a lot of evidence regarding this animal, but it was known to have had crushing type posterior teeth. Speaking of teeth, a later Hyliochampsid, a Harkudosuchus, shows a series of multi-cusp teeth. This different range in tooth shapes was something far more akin to the dentition of a mammal than anything else and its skull structure indicated that it could have actually fed on plant matter. 
something at this point extremely uncommon among crocodile relatives. Planocranidae was another interesting family inside of Yusukia that evolved shortly after the extinction of the dinosaurs during the Paleocene epoch. More heavily armored than the crocodilians we're familiar with today, these reptiles boasted longer legs and more curiously claws on its feet that strongly resembled hooves. As such, planocranids such as Bovarasuchus found in Germany and North America would have spent much more time on land, where its adaptations to its limbs would give it the ability to run, a trait useful in hunting terrestrial prey. But perhaps the most important grouping in all of Yusukia to us has to be the order Crocodilia. This is the clade that all modern crocodiles, alligators, gharials, and caimans are part of. First appearing during the late Cretaceous period, the first possible basal crocodilian might have been Portugalosuchus, that appeared 95 million years ago, although there has been a dispute as to whether or not this reptile was a true crocodilian or if it fell right outside the order. Just like with a lot of the stuff we've seen in this video so far, there are a lot of different views on how exactly modern crocodilians can be organized on a family tree. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to be using the model used by E. Hakala and colleagues in 2021. In it, Crocodilia can be broken down into two main groups. The first main group is Longorostris, which itself contains crocodiles, gharials, and false gharials. As the name suggests, the family Crocodilidae is the one that contains all living crocodiles. Now this family contains three different genera. Crocodilus is the first genus and can be roughly broken down into two types of crocodiles, those inhabiting Asia and Australia, such as the saltwater crocodile and the mugger crocodile, and those inhabiting the Americas and Africa, like the Nile crocodile and the American crocodile. A late Miocene species, Crocodilus chechai, found in Libya and Kenya, is believed by some researchers to be a link between those New World and African crocodiles. Crocodiles are known for having V-shaped snouts with teeth that can be seen in both their upper and lower jaws when closed. As for other genera, Mesistops contains the slender-snouted crocodile, and Osteolamus contains the dwarf crocodiles. Sister to Crocodilidae is the superfamily Gavialidae, or basal members here such as the Eocene Megadontosuchus sported a broader crocodilian skull, but members of the family Gavialidae departed from this body plan. Gharials, belonging to the genus Gavialis, which evolved around India and Pakistan in the Miocene, are crocodilians found throughout South and Southeast Asia, known for their long pointed snouts and webbed feet. False gharials, found in the genus Tamistema, also share these features with some minor differences being a broadening of the snout towards the base of the head. One thing to note is that the members of Longarostris, such as crocodiles and gharials, is that they generally have salt glands which help filter sodium and chloride, allowing them to traverse through saltwater environments. While these glands are present in other crocodilians such as alligators and caimans, they for the most part lost that ability, restricting them to mostly freshwater environments. On that note, the next major grouping in Crocodilia is Alligatoroidea. One of this grouping's most basal members, Lydeosuchus, evolved around 77.9 million years ago in Alberta, Canada. Additionally, the potential largest crocodilian of all time, the late Cretaceous Dinosuchus, was also part of Alligatoroidea. This massive creature could reach up to 10 meters or 33 feet in length, which would make it even larger than Sarcosuchus. Even back then, these crocodilians showcased some differences from crocodiles and gharials, most notably with their U-shaped snouts that we see in alligators and alligatoridae, the family in this group that contains all its extant crocodilians. Today there are only two extant species of alligator, the American and Chinese alligator, both found under the genus alligator. In addition to the U-shaped snout, a key trait of alligators is their wide upper jaw that hides their lower teeth unlike with crocodiles. Caimans are a smaller relative of the alligator that inhabits Central and South America. The most basal genus here, Culebrasuchus, dates back to roughly 20 million years ago and was found in Panama. This genus has several features found in modern day caimans such as slightly upward rather than forward facing nostrils as well as blunter teeth in the back of their jaws. Today's caimans are found under the genus Cayman, Melanosuchus, and Peleosuchus. The evolution of the crocodile shows the story of truly primordial beasts surviving from ancient times into the modern day, making it through two great mass extinctions and thriving in several different niches. Crocodiles and their ancestors thrived throughout a timeline that goes back almost 250 million years. When you take a step back and look at the history of these reptiles, it really is a blessing that we still get to share the world with such awesome creatures. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, make sure to give it a like, make sure to comment, and make sure to subscribe.